Welcome to Bristol. Um, we're going to perform a uh, live recorded case and uh, this in partnership with Shockwave IVL. Just a quick summary of the case. This is a 61 year old gentleman with a six month history of increasing shortness of breath. He's hypercholesterolemic and has recently had a knee replacement for osteoarthritis. He presented to our rapid access chest pain clinic and went on to have a CT coronary angiogram and this not only showed extensive calcification, but an FFR CT in the LAD and right coronary artery, both less than 0.7. He's got normal echocardiogram and has recently had an angiogram. And we have discussed the options with the patient for potential medical therapy or revascularization and the different modalities of revascularization. And he has, uh, through patient choice, selected to have multivessel PCI. Probably just worth looking at the coronary artery uh, uh, CT. We don't commonly look at these before performing coronary angiography, but I think you can see here in these three panels that there is extensive calcification in this non-contrast image with, in areas, concentric calcification, but also quite marked eccentric calcification. So we're set up in our lab and I'm just going to pass you over to Tom Johnson and Sinjini Biswas who will be performing our case with along with our team. Thanks Julian. So welcome to the Bristol Heart Institute. We've got a great team here. As you've mentioned Sinjini, our uh, senior interventional fellow. We've got Tracy as Rad, Tash uh, as running nurse and Marie in the back as a physiologist. She taken a six seven French slender guide um, uh, to uh, facilitate for us if, if we need to upsize equipment into the coronary. A six French um, EBU three point five guide catheter, and I've just placed a scion blue wire down the LAD. So even this NC balloon is pushing hard against the lesion. We'll go up there and see if then we can we can progress the balloon forwards. I'll go with the two five. Just nominal Just twelve. You go. I'll, I'll ask you to come down. I'll try and progress it forwards. Okay, come down there. There we go. Okay, so we're across that lesion now. Let's see what we can do. And just acquire that for us. It'd be interesting to see if there's yeah. a waste. It does look as though there's a little bit of a waste proximally there, doesn't it? Maybe not. Yeah, it's difficult to tell. And I'm not sure a wasted balloon necessarily, I mean, the absence of a waste doesn't necessarily mean that we've fully modified this with such a long extent of calcium. We'll, we'll need to see. So I just got this on full screen. Yeah, so we haven't quite got round the, the most critical lesion in the mid vessel of the LED. And, and we see there kind of calcium from 9 to 12 o'clock, but relatively healthy vessel. Um, it's a large vessel, so it's certainly 4, 4, 5. And then we see that kind of very protrusive kind of gnarly calcium just around the level of that septal. And again, this is non-circumferential, so from sort of 11 to 3 o'clock, you're seeing really quite a large area of calcification. There's a branch coming in. I think that may well be the diagonal that we're just coming back across. Now certainly about 270 degrees of calcification. It is interesting. That's an area we won't, so... Now uh, coming back Lots. into the proximal LED, which is certainly lumen four, five millimetres. Um, just bookmark there, yeah. Again, you just see that little plaque of calcium at sort of midday. And there's the circumflex coming in, back into the left main, which looks healthy. Okay, so that's actually delivered very nicely. Just get that wire down. So 
always just being careful with the guide extension not to pick up struts of the device, not to disrupt the stent on its balloon. So just being mindful of that now as actually there's a huge amount of resistance in trying to pull this device back through that calcium. So using the reference of the IVUS for our landing, this should be good. Yeah, that's not too bad. Okay, we know from the IVUS that that's healthy. Come back up to the areocranial view for me, please. So nominal here is nine. So we'll take the four five to post a late. Interesting to see how this expands up to the level of the diagonal. We've seen the ostium of the diagonal is well open. We haven't put a wire down. Um, okay, so that's nine atmospheres. There's work to be done there. Down from nine. That's fab. Yeah, good there. Yeah. Fourteen. Well, the outflow importantly looks good having taken yeah. that three five um i do just wonder that. about predilate i do wonder about kissing into that diag oh. Let, let's have another wire please i couldn't be absolutely sure of the pot position i, I don't think we've necessarily stented back so we will while well, we've still got the guidezilla down we're going to take this four oh balloon we need a second in deflator we'll then ex we'll take the guide extension out we'll rewire the diagonal and we'll, we'll kiss with a three five that we've already got on the table and actually just a two five for the purpose of just opening up the ostium of the diagonal for the moment not wanting to injure it and i'd hope we're actually done to so have the second in deflator and a, a fresh two five balloon would be lovely just moving forward i don't want to go really round that bend i think that's probably a good place to post a late to with this 4 0. It's probably this is at the level of that dissection on the Ivis where the vessel was certainly four, if not a little bit bigger. Again, you might just get some stretch pain here, Kevin. Just pop some to that distal marker, you see that yeah. eccentricity, don't you? Just going up cautiously. 14, 16. We just remember those craggy segments of calcium. Okay, so on three we'll come down. One, two, three. Okay. Good. So let's take the ivis down. Looks nice actually in distal. So it looks fine. So important to see the distal edge and that we haven't disrupted, particularly having slightly oversized. So there's the stent edge, which actually looks very nice. Just, yeah, bookmark, that's great. So we've got a really good stent area there. And that's come up very nicely. Yeah, Kevin, we're just using a particular piece of kit here to just give us the perfect assessment of the final stent result. Just down a little bit there, we just bookmark there just for a measurement, but I think it's adequate. You see the dissection there, you just see how the, the dissection has been brought back and there's the diagonal wire coming back in. So actually the proximal stent segment, it is a relatively short proximal yeah. stent segment, but I mean, I think we, we were hindered by the 38 millimeters, 48 would have taken us far, far too long. Yeah. It's actually worked really well, I think. Great.
But just worth looking at that MSA of B1. Perfect, seven and a half. So we're way exceeding the five of ultimate, but but it's a big vessel. So the number is probably less important than just seeing that we've got adequate expansion. Okay, that's come up beautifully. Yeah, it's really nice. Okay. Uh, we're going to go on and treat the right coronary artery now. You can just see there uh, his CT and again, extensive calcification, potentially eccentric in this lower panelled image. So uh, it'll be interesting to compare that now to the angiographic findings and also to uh, the IVUS images. So there's a few challenges here, Tom, aren't there? So it's a nice... Yeah, it's actually better, better delineated here than it was in the diagnostic, actually. So you, it looks like you've got, probably got a branch or something that's coming off at that area where the vessel seems to become aneurysmal. Yeah. The calcium in that proximal segment is interesting. Let's see how a wire negotiates it. Yeah, these can be impressively challenging, these aneurysmal segments, and just finding your exit port because you've got what a potentially 10 millimeter vessel going yeah. into a one millimeter. As you say, your wire is biased by the proximal stenosis. No, so that wire shape's that wire shape's just not going to work. So let's come out with the wire, please. Actually, why don't we leave this in situ and let's take another wire, please? Just because we've got that issue with the guide. We're just going to put a very accentuated angle on this now, just to see if. It may need a microcatheter. That's taking a different approach. Huh. That's all right. It might prolapse its way in, but it might not. Uh, that is good. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Well, I wonder whether we try and IVIS this up front, actually. What do you think? Yeah, ooh, probably with a guide ooh, extension ooh, ooh. just to support you. Yeah, we'll take the guide sciller back. So let's see. No. Which I guess is not unexpected. 2.5NC, something like yeah, that? Yeah, 2.5NC. I think fresh 2.5NC yeah. would be great. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? Okay, we'll give you a non compliant. I found just a two o, Just do a 2 0, shall we? And yeah. then step it up. This wasn't on. Yeah, I'm going to give you a 2020, just slightly more deliverable. Doesn't want to. Should we go down another yeah. size then? Here's a 1220. I think you just sometimes have. Yeah, I think we have to. Yep. <laughs> To be honest, there's not a huge amount of difference not in the two surprised. and two five. No. And then, you know, we're going to be looking at algorithms here, aren't we? So wire across, balloon doesn't deliver. I mean, you could upsize to a seven French, you could take a more supportive guide. You've already got a guide zilla in place or a guide extension in place. Um, but you know, the calcium like, modification. Yeah. There comes a point there where you have to think rotablation up front yeah. is going to be the right thing to do. But let's see, I mean, we talked about this offline and, and the, the nature of the of this segment of right, I don't think is necessarily that attractive for rotablation right. as, as the upfront strategy because yeah. you've just got lots of angulation and the the, the risk of kind of the, the, the rotaber flying off at an angle. So the preference actually would be IVL if we could get the catheter delivered. 
but we just have to better understand it. And we take it sequentially, as you said, as kind of a, an algorithmic approach to this. Yeah. So the lowest profile balloon we can take, but we could go lower, but 1.2 here as a kind of workhorse balloon. Hopefully this gives us a path for then sequentially upsizing. So we go back with the two next if this goes across. A lot of forward pressure on it just in the hope that it might have nuzzled its way forwards a bit. Not sure it has. You actually see there's a failure of contrast in the distal part of that balloon. This guide's offering us nothing. Okay, so go down there. No. I think we have to we probably do change the. I mean, the only other thing is whether you want to flip that guide over so clockwise torque. Actually, do that over the guide liner potentially. Yeah, which then gives a bit of protection, doesn't it? Yeah, so looking a bit more meaty. Yep. Now, so it is, we've got a used balloon to try and cross it, but we'll see. That's gone. It's so it's gone. a lovely yeah. example of how you can deeply engage these rights. And I mean, you just obviously back that have out to, a little bit. Yeah, obviously you have to be cautious, but it situations okay. like this. Good, good, very thought. nice example. Okay, so come up there for me. Fourteen. Okay, and we'll go up with this. We'll take the 2 o balloon next. So we'll just go through the same steps again. So we'll just reset everything and then try and clockwise rotate this. And it's a funny sort of movement to describe, isn't it? So you are yeah. just a gentle forward motion and a, and a push and a clockwise turn. And you can see that really does take your guide halfway down. Yeah, it's lovely. It's 12. 14, 16. Lots and lots of restraint there. Yes, yeah, you see it there, don't you, that? Yeah. Okay, come down there. Just bookmark there for me, Julian. Whoop, there you go, bit of plop. Yeah. A little bit of speckling. Yes, yeah, so we're still actually a fair way from the true lesion. So you see that calcific disease from nine up to one o'clock, but with a pretty good lumen, three, three, five lumen. So now it's getting a bit craggier. So you've actually got those two nodules, 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock. Now that more normal segment again. Now we're going to come into the large aneurysmal segment. So just a little nodular calcium at 6, 7 o'clock. More protrusive there. There's a side, side branch, branch coming yeah. off. And now we come into something really quite bulky. Again, there's a normal segment of vessel. That's the aneurysm. So we might at some point want to do a pull back a, a greater depth of penetration and then the area of interest is going to be coming up where presumably we have then got this bulky lesion still non-concentric okay So let's have a look at that ibis. Just lost it a bit there, didn't we? So your distal here, so I just put a bookmark in there. And then we come into that. So, you know, you've got a lot of drop out between what's 10 o'clock and 3 o'clock. Yeah, so you, and you've got over 270 degrees of calcium there and a high burden. I mean, so 
it's interesting. I think our our strategies evolved even in the last six months, really, where you might now sequentially still go up with further balloons. I'm inclined to take a shockwave. Yeah, and to then so. and, and just to because it it allows us to go at relatively low pressure without the jeopardy of going to ridiculously high pressures with non-compliant balloons and pushing calcium out. Three five. We, it's, just... It may even be a four. Yeah. Let's just do a. Yeah, good plan. We'll do an ACT. And and I think I think to be fair, our our approach to this has changed. Where previously I would flog this with non-compliant balloons, and I think the risk there is 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 more significant than we think. Yeah. We're actually, taking taking a technology that's suited for this environment gives I us mean, a a better chance of that. Ivis image is just very impressive. They're probably. Isn't, I mean, I can't see any reverberation at all in the lower half. No, no. Well, the angiogram suggests that we've got a rock, really. And then this is the more proximal lesion, which is... Three, five got... or five, four? Well, that was... It's three... Three, five. Yeah, should we take the three, five shockwave then? But remarkably easy to set up this, really, isn't it? Yeah, so so we're just going to take the hand set into a sterile plastic cover. So that will extend down onto the table. And then we've selected this 3-5 balloon. So it probably is somewhere between 3-5 and 4. I think this is sensibly cautious. Yeah, you can see that overhead. Yeah. So we'll just prep the balloon as we normally would. Um, and it's a rapid side. exchange, isn't it? So it's just yep. it's a rapid exchange, but with a side port for preparation. And forwards there. Stop. Great. Go neg. Let's take it out of its casing. And so then this red cap comes off, and this is a kind of magnetic connector, which you'll see as it connects, it will light orange. And on the device as well, Marie will show it's, it's then orange. So that's perfect. So leave it, leave it as it is there. So yeah. that's a kind of safety uh, element to prevent us from deploying shocks when the balloon's not inflated, the risk being that you create a spark that will melt the balloon, burst the balloon. So we'll leave it in its kind of standby state until we um, get the balloon down the vessel. Okay. Great. So again, just going stepwise, so just extending the extension and then talking the guide back into position that looks like it should go yeah fair enough okay. and to be fair i think you'd have had the same issue with a 3.5 nc balloon yeah okay so we're going to activate it by uh, on the console just having that button pressed tracy if you just press the orange button therapy Yep. So now we see it all activate green, so we're good to go. And so now we'll inflate up the balloon and so visualize that angiographically. So we see that come up, take that up to four atmospheres. And so we see really nicely there winging of the balloon. And now this is really important that we've got the balloon inflated so that the sparks of the shockwave don't risk being in contact. And now we'll just deploy the first 10 trains. So deploying now. And you can see there is some capture there. And actually, that balloon has inflated. You can see that balloon inflate. That's yeah. really impressive. Uh, just then go up to six. You might have felt something there, Kevin. So actually, that's come up really nicely. 
I've just brought, I've inched that back just a little while so that the electrodes, yeah. we, just by maneuvering the balloon a little bit, we just alter the propagation. So back up to four there, and we'll just give another. You get the impression there's a proximal waist, yeah, don't you? Set, and I think that's the area that we had difficulty with crossing. So, so we've done the distal bit of the aneurysm, haven't we? That yeah. distal exit port, and then there's probably the entry port to that aneurysm, which so is back up to six. So we'll go up again. I've been in CVC that waist. Yeah, hopefully we're in the mid. Are you okay there, Kevin? Are you in what way? Just, yeah, okay. It's, yeah, that you might feel a funny sensation there. That's us just using a particular type of kit to crack this calcium. And it is interesting. I think the more calcified people's vascular tree is, the more that they feel this. They can feel it in their teeth. They can feel it in their neck. Yeah. And down. Uh, come back a little bit more because I don't think we have quite captured it. The issue here is just to be mindful of the fact that I have got a really heavily engaged catheter, so actually I'm not quite clear where the anatomy is anymore. So we've got a better pressure there. See, I think that isn't quite back far enough, is it? No, I don't think. I think we've still got a little way to come. I've come half a balloon length back, actually. Back up to six again. It was the right size balloon. You can see the tram line of calcification extending right mm. the way back up that vessel on the angiogram. Okay, so let's come back a bit more. That looks a bit more like it. It's sort of in these lesions, I would do as much as I need to. There we oh, go, look. Yeah. Actually, I'm up, I'm up there at six. Okay, there's a couple of questions here. So that initial inflation pressure? Was four and then upsizing to six. So so you were going at really low inflation. So th mm. this is proving to be quite a feisty lesion. That, that is the area. So I've, I've actually upsized that a bit, gone to six to eight. Um, and it looks a bit better there, doesn't it? It does yeah. look better than where we started. Good. And that was where that too ugly. So, um, you know, I think how many um, cycles of energy did you deliver to a coronary artery? And I think, you know, what you want to do is to get a, a good coverage of your artery, which you've, you've demonstrated very nicely here. I always quite like to keep a couple of runs in, yeah. in the bag, just in case you need to go back having imaged it again. And you've yeah, seen agree. areas where you haven't created enough fractures or or gaps okay. within our I'm just gonna we've, so we've got 30 left so I'm just yeah. gonna go up this one last time here I think we we went sufficiently yeah. distal so yeah. you were still seeing a little bit of a waste I'm gonna go back up to that six which is kind of an off-label pressure I have on occasion gone higher but um and I think Shockwave themselves are very happy with us doing that aren't they yeah, yeah we're just seeing some captured beats there Back up to eight. Okay, so that looks really good. I think we're probably now at a stage. You just see there's still possibly a little wasting there just on the diaphragm. It may just be the diaphragm that's giving us a funny appearance, but the important thing here will be now to image. It's down from eight. So that's a good old four millimeter vessel, really, isn't it? Yeah. Question is where we're going to land. Distal. I've gone quite distal there with the probe, so that's pretty good. If you just bookmark yeah. there for me, again using just the fluoro acquisition to guide us as to where we're going to land our stent next. I mean, it's kind of a segment of disease. You've got kind of at least 180 degrees of healthy vessel, so you could even come more land the stent more proximal if we wanted. Just bookmark there. That's a bit. That's now getting into. Yeah, it's somewhere in between. It's going to be somewhere two. in between those two, possibly. If we are limited. If you look at the longitudinal again. view, you see that that lump of calcium. Yeah. Just.
past that. But again, E3. actually, you could just come to here. That's quite nice, actually, isn't it? Yeah. That's 4 0. There's a the side branch. It'll be just really interesting to see how we've modified those areas. So that's opened up, and now we're into that aneurysmal segment. The only issue is this aneurysmal segment is we're clearly going to have a stent that is not opposed in there. This is and then here definitely we come opened back up. into the area. Yeah. Yeah. There you see a nice fracture at six, six o'clock. Yeah. And then we should have that concentric area that we, again, you see fracture there, that side branch. Coming back towards the guide extension. Okay. That's for bookmark there. That's a nice, that's that's certainly a healthy segment. And there we're at sort of five, four, five, five. Big old vessel. So we've seen clear modification of that segment that we identified on the first run. Oops. I think you're looking at a 38 again, aren't you? Um, Sticking you there distally. Yeah. And then proximally, you're, if you want to do a 38, you're back to here. Okay, that's so a 4038. Yep. Yeah, Ultimaster again. So again, I guess it's not surprising that we just see some restriction here in terms of delivery of the stent, which is very different to delivery of the other's catheter. So I'm again, just going through the sequential careful progression of guide catheter and extension, hopefully then allowing us to just get around this bend where the stent is being held up. And that's delivering nicely now. And then again, we're just gonna to have to back everything off because the key issue here is the, the loss really of the anatomical markers that we normally have where our stent is sitting happily. And then just being mindful not to disrupt the stent and not to leave either the guide or the extension aggressively engaged where we might then dissect proximal vessel. So the pressure is helpful here and we see a nice pressure then lengthwise, I think we're going to have to come back. The plan was from the Ivis to come back. See where we are there. That's actually pretty good. Okay. So up here with the stent. So nominals nine. Might just get some discomfort here, Kevin, okay? Well done. Good, so we're up at 10 there. That's okay. Stents up. Fantastic. We have actually only looked in this view. We haven't done any mm. other projection yet, have we? Let's just come to the REO there. So I mean, the acute stent result is fantastic. Now clearly there's work that we could need to do in terms of post dilating this vessel. We'll take a four five NC balloon as well, please. Murray, four five fifteen. 
Okay, so here we're just going to try and optimize this aneurysmal segment if we can. I'm not sure, I mean, we're going to have to accept that there's going to be a degree of malapposition, but I'm just going to try and bring the struts up in the, that segment. So we're using here a 5.5 balloon, only eight millimeters long. So hopefully then that will, we're not going to go daft with pressure. It's just a question of just palpating the stent. So I'm just going up very slowly here. So nominal is 12. We're currently subnominal here. There we go, nominal 12. That shows nicely how we've distorted actually with the 5.0 stent, doesn't it? With the 5.0 balloon, that's a really nice picture. You see the calcium extending beyond the stent. That's 12 atmospheres. That's good, go there. 14. 14. Okay, and down. Great, let's take the ibis. So really careful here to look at the distal edge of our stent. It'll be interesting to see then how the dilatation of the vessel at the level of the aneurysm has affected the stent. So we've got nice apposition there. So now we'll be coming back into the aneurysmal segment and actually We expect we see malapposition at that sort of six o'clock segment, but actually the stent is really quite well expanded. Having taken a device that would go up to five five point eight, we see that we've got good expansion. That's the area of probably the most critical calcium. We just bookmark there. And then we just want to be sure that we've got an opposed stent in the proximal segment. So again, this all looks very nicely expanded. Still coming back through the stent. That's pretty good. We've got no proximal disruption. So all in all, that looks pretty good. Great, let's come to the 2020 then. We, we've had a really challenging case here of two vessel heavily calcified disease. Uh, I think we've seen the utility both from the very beginning of using the CT to define the extent of disease and actually through a kind of algorithmic sequential approach we've got a very nice result in the LAD just simply through aggressive predilatation use of uh, intravascular ultrasound to guide each step. And then the right coronary, we've seen really exquisitely tight calcific disease, which did require then further modification. And actually, I think IVL in this case massively simplified what was really a very challenging uh, lesion. And we've seen now gratifyingly a stent expand up into really quite challenging uh, aneurysmal disease with, with a fantastic result, which I hope by IVUS we can be confident will give a good long-term outcome to the patient. So thanks for your attention. Um, Tom, that was a great case. Uh, really enjoyed uh, watching that and commentating on it. Um, interesting though, uh, we were focused on the LAD to start with and where we ended up was using imaging to guide our strategy in the LAD and we didn't require any adjuncts. And then the right coronary was a bit of a surprise. Yeah, well, obviously for the purpose of this, we've edited it down to focus predominantly on the right because that's where the interest was in terms of a stepwise approach. But actually the, 
the forethought that went into looking at the CT, expecting, as, as we'd said at the original presentation, very high burden calcium in that LED. Actually, when it came down to it, a sequential approach of predilatation imaging demonstrating effective modification was enough. Um, and it does then make you wonder about how, how you adopt an algorithmic approach. But I think certainly in our experience, adopting imaging as the kind of central focus to the decision making has very much simplified the strategy in all of these cases, whether they need adjunct or not. Yeah, I mean, I think we're still learning about calcium. It's not homogenous. It, the imaging, I mean, I think CT doesn't necessarily help you because we haven't been able to define what is calcium that we can modify and can't modify a CT, but certainly we do have that ability with OCT and intravascular or IVUS. Yeah, I mean, I think with the LAD, what was interesting was that there was initially for me an anxiety about rotor regret, that we saw that gnarly nodular calcium. And I think for now that still remains one of the biggest problems. And actually, despite the IVUS appearance initially, the final stent result and the IVUS result were very, very good. and the elastic nature of the vessel allowed accommodation of the stent. And then actually, as you said, we were more surprised then by the, the nature of the calcium in the right, which in itself wasn't completely concentric, but was very high burden. And, and using IVL massively simplified the, the approach we could take. So once we'd gone from small balloon up to a point where we could then safely deliver the IVL, the IVL then certainly transformed delivery thereafter and IVAS confirmed the expansion. So, so I think again this stepwise approach to using the imaging to define what we're treating and then making sensible kind of stepwise uh, decisions from then makes it a lot lot easier. Yeah great case, lots of learning and I think still highlights the fact that we've got a lot more to learn as well so look forward to yeah. doing more with you. Exciting isn't it? All right. So um, nice right coronary artery that you're going to shockwave. Do you want to just go through the setup of the system, uh, taking your time just to show us uh, how you connect, how you get ready to deliver uh, your shockwave C2 balloon, ready to deliver therapies? Sure. So you can see the console, I think, in frame. So we'll turn the console on. So this is obviously battery powered. And so we, we then see um, the, the, the console setting up. Uh, we need to take our balloon catheter onto the table and prep it. Yeah, so I mean just on that console there you can see it's been, uh, we leave it on charge always so uh, the battery's full, the number of uh, therapies is set at zero, we haven't got a catheter connected yet and we'll see that number change. So. And so what have you got there? That's a console cover in your hands? So we've got a console cover, so we'll take the um, probe from Singini. So I'll just zoom out so we can see what this, so this is the... So we're actually just, we're using the um, console cover for the OCT here, which fits very well, has a very neat opening on the front end. So we take that plastic cover back. So there hopefully you see um, that we have the uh, cover in place down to the header of the um, shockwave probe. Now we can set up our balloon. We can draw back on the uh, side arm of the balloon, just prepping the balloon as we normally would. Uh, connect on to the in deflator. You I'm go happy negative. to go negative. Yeah. And then we expose the back end of the shockwave device, which is then going to connect with a magnetic click 
uh, to the probe. So you can see there that then we'll have a connection uh, light come on on the console. So we hear that audible uh, bleep, and now we see the 80 shocks come up on the console. Yeah, and just and hold importantly, it there a then we've got this this yellow light. So we see the yellow light both at the operator level on the handheld device and on the uh, console itself. And that's important, actually, because um, we will ask then the technician to press the therapy button to go active. And it, it's worth just keeping it like this so that when we're moving the device up to the patient that we don't inadvertently release therapy because obviously without the balloon inflated, there would be a resultant um, breach of the, the balloon and uh, we'd have to use a new device. So I don't know whether you just want to focus in on the balloon. Yes, yeah, so Tom, actually, we got a very nice view of the uh, shockwave balloon here. Do you want to just talk us yeah. through what you can see? So simply loaded it onto a workhorse wire. You see the yellow uh, tapered tip of the balloon. And then as we move up the shaft, the first thing we see is the radio opaque marker. And then hopefully you can see then there are two electrodes um, about five to six millimeters apart, uh, maybe a little bit more, eight millimeters on this 12 millimeter balloon. And then um, we come back to the final radio opaque marker. So, so that shows quite nicely um, where the electrodes sit upon the balloon. Yep. It's going to zoom out there. So feed the balloon so up as normal. Just at a six French, fairly straightforward here, isn't it? Yep. Okay, so we're going to activate it by uh, on the console just having that button pressed. Tracy, if you just press the orange button. Therapy. Yep. So now we see it all activate green, so we're good to go. And so now we'll inflate up the balloon. And so visualize that angiographically. So we see that come up, take that up to four atmospheres. And so we see really nicely there winging of the balloon. And now this is really important that we've got the balloon inflated so that the sparks of the shockwave don't risk being in contact. And now we'll just deploy the first 10 trains. So deploying now. And you can see there is some capture there. And actually that balloon has inflated. You can see that balloon inflate. That's yeah. really impressive. Uh, just then go up to six. You might have felt something there, Kevin. So actually that's come up really nicely.